Hello. In this video, we are going to learn how to use CSS properties such as background, border, and margin to format the document. We will use internal CSS for our examples, but you can very well move them to external document and link them to your HTML file. To set the foreground color, we will use the color property and after colon we can either give hexadecimal number or we can specify color name. We will give color name for now. For example, this will set the color for the element we have specified. Similarly, to set background color, we will use background color property. It is typically applied to the whole HTML body but can be applied to individual elements as well. Instead of color, if we want to set an image as background, we will use CSS property background image. Here we need to specify the image path after the colon. By default, the background image is repeated horizontally and vertically. You can use the background repeat property to change the behavior to either no repeat or repeat only or horizontally or vertically. You can also use background which is shortcut for all three background properties we just used. It helps to write compact script. You can use background and give it all three values separated by space. If you leave out any of them, it is set to its default value. Height and width is used to set the height and width of element in pixels or in person too. The height and width properties do not include padding, border, or margins. Now we are going to look at CSS properties to set the borders. These properties include border width, color, and style. Border width property can take values of thin, medium, thick, or a numeric value given thickness in pixels. You can set the border color by either giving the color name directly or specifying the RGB or hex values. There are different types of borders to choose from, like dotted, dashed, solid, double, etc. Or you can also specify none or hidden if you do not want any border. Here too, you can use a shortcut border for all three border properties. You can write border, colon, and then give the values for width, style, and color separated by space. If you leave out any of them, it is set to its default value. Now we will take a look at how to set margins on an element. For this we use margin left, margin right, margin top and margin bottom. You can specify the margin in pixels for them. Here too you can use shortcut margin. The order in which the margin needs to be given is top, right, bottom and left. Similarly, we have padding which defines the distance between the border and content. For this, we will use padding left, padding right, padding top, and padding bottom. You can specify the padding in pixels for them. Like margin, here too you can use shortcut padding for all four padding properties. You can write padding followed by colon and then give the values for top, right, bottom, and left in that order separated by space. In our next video, we are going to learn how to use CSS properties related to font and text.